Hi, colleagues. It's almost vacation time, so get excited. Um, but before we before we go, um, some of you have been asking about setting up a calendar for next year so that you can start planning. I know, right? And you can set up your class calendar and start planning your lessons if you choose to. All right, we're going to start with obviously a blank screen and an internet browser. I'm fond of Firefox for Google calendars. Type in tinyurl.com slash nchsg, as in nchs Google. Take us to the login page for Google Apps. And you can put in your first name dot last name. And I'm going to email you the default password and you can put that in and sign in. Now you are at the basic Google Apps page. The first thing you have to do is change your password because you don't want to leave it as a default password. So let's go do that right away. So let's go to email and we're going to go to settings. And we're going to go to accounts and we are going to click on change password and you have to enter the current password and enter your new password and enter it again and you click change password now we can return to email from the mail page, we're going to go up to calendar in the upper left hand corner here. And now you will see that you have a blank calendar and right here you have a calendar that's your default calendar. I don't want you to use that one yet. Once you import the calendar that I showed you in the video just a couple of days ago, you it's really hard to take it all out. So what I'm going to have you guys do is construct new calendars. So we're going to go to create and you're going to name your calendar. We're going to call this calendar Global History 2 period A. We'll call this 2009-2010 room 101. You may or may not choose to make this calendar public and share it with others in the domain, but that means that kids are going to be able to see it. So for now, you can leave it blank until you decide. Otherwise, you're always welcome to go back and change it later on. You can invite yourself if you have another Google account. For me, I have mloodle at mac.com. I'm going to create the calendar. This little message here is saying, are you sure you want to give access to the following email address outside of this calendar's domain? Which means that basically you're inviting into this calendar somebody who's not at ncps-k12.org. And in this case, you are certain because you're inviting yourself. So you're going to click OK. There is Global History 2, period A. And now we are going to import the calendar that um, I referenced the other day. So add, and we're going to click import calendar, and we're going to browse. I emailed you a CSV form along with your password, and in that, that CSV form is, the, is what you want to import. So I've put it on my desktop here, and you can put it wherever you'd like to file it, but it's a, going to be a very valuable file um, depending on how many calendars you want to set up. This is for semester one, and you're going to click on that. And don't add it to your default calendar. Instead, you're going to add it to the calendar you just set up for your class. And then you import. And you wait patiently. It takes probably, I don't know, I could count, but I'm guessing maybe 10, 12 seconds. And there it says, processed 705 events. And it successfully imported 705 events. All right, so let's go back to the calendar. And oh, there's nothing there, right? Okay, well, that's because the events are in September. So if we look at September 14, that seems to be my favorite day for these purposes, and we highlight that calendar, there you have it. So now it says Global History Period A, and you have your calendar. And now you can come in and you can start planning. Click on A period, and you can say, uh, Philip the second and you can describe your project students will yada 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 and look you can add a Google Doc 
So if you take any assignment or any handout and you bring it into Google Docs, which is just right up here, then you can actually attach it to your calendar and then you can save. That's how you set up a calendar and you can add as many calendars as you like. So let's say you want to create another calendar and this is for actually global one period B. And again, we can do 20, 2009, 2010, and you can say this one's going to be in room 104, and you can leave all of that blank, and you can invite yourself again and create calendar, and yes, you're going to choose to do that. And there it is, and then you add, import a calendar, browse, your schedule, open, and choose the correct calendar, and import it. And it's again going to take a few minutes, and there it is, you can go back to your calendar, and now you have a second calendar. If you don't want to see both simultaneously, you can turn that one off and only look at that one. You can turn them both off and you have your default calendar. You can turn them both on and look at them simultaneously. If you want to change your settings for a specific calendar, you can, let's say if you want to add another email address or you want to change your settings, you can just go to share this calendar. And you can add an email address or you can choose to make it public or not make it public. Or you can make it public to the whole wide world or you can change your mind and make it public only to the people in NCPS K-12. But just remember that if you do that, that includes students, not just teachers. Now there's one thing about inviting yourself to a calendar in the NCPS domain that you should be aware of. When you first invite your other Google account into this calendar so that you can work with this calendar from whether you're logged in as NCPS or you're logged in as um, whatever it is that your default account is. After you've done that and you've clicked OK, are you sure you want to do that? And you've, then you can go in and give yourself administrative rights to this calendar. We're going to go into share this calendar. And there it is. There's my other Google account that I use all the time. And it says that I can only see event details. But now you can make changes and manage sharing. So you can change your settings to make changes and manage sharing. And then you're going to be able to make entries regardless of how you're logged into Google. You can sync it with Moodle. So for example, if I go to my Moodle page, the first thing we see here is the calendar. That's this calendar. So that if I make a change here, it's automatically going to show up there. I don't need to do anything other than change it here. And I can change this calendar, regardless of how I'm logged in, automatically sync with the Moodle. The final piece that I'd really like to point out is if you have an iPhone, and I think this works with the BlackBerry also, but I don't have a BlackBerry, so I have no idea, um, you can sync this calendar with your phone, which is rather awesome. And you can set up your calendar with notifications by clicking on uh, notifications so that you can get text messages on your phone or you can get reminders on your phone about events that are coming up. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you have a wonderful summer. Because we were asked, I thought um, I'd put this out there 